What's going on basketball world? It's just us. Do you remember when you were a kid and one of the assignments in school was to make a family tree? You'd go through your family's history, find different roots, similar characteristics, even similar traits. What if I were to tell you coaching in the NBA is the exact same? Okay, stop, stop, please, just stop. The goal of the video was to show you some of the most crazy coaching trees in NBA history. But when I did some actual research, I found something even crazier. Coaching in the NBA isn't like a forest. It's actually one single massive tree compiled of every single coach in NBA history. I believe that you can pick any coach in the NBA right now, let's say Nuggets head coach Mike Malone, and root them all the way back to the inventor of basketball himself, Dr. James Naismith. Yeah. I know. But first, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and if you don't mind, hit that notification button. We make tons of other videos like this on basketball, the UFC, NFL, and European soccer. Also, if you can spare anything, please take the time to donate to the following charities. These charities are involved with helping stop violence and brutality by police and raise awareness for the social injustice, racism, and discrimination black people around the world face. Together with our donations, our protests, and most importantly, our voices, we can help make a difference. Back to our mind-blowing coaching tree. So by the end of this video, you will believe that about 80 to 90% of NBA coaches can in some way be linked to James Naismith, the inventor of basketball back in 1891. To understand this phenomenon, there are two things you have to understand. One is the law of six degrees of separation, which is defined as the idea that people are six or fewer social connections away from each other. I literally ripped that off Wikipedia, but it is true. The second is the world of coaching in the NBA. In basketball, the coaching trees are massive with hundreds of different branches, stems that grow leaves of their own and blossom into even more trees. And I know that's not how trees work, but please just roll with me for a second, okay? It's really cool because just like a family tree, a coaching tree has its own characteristics, its own traits, and with every coach that joins onto that tree, you get another version of the coaching methodology. They're like disciples here to spread the good word of zone defense, box and one, and how to run a triangle offense. The world of coaching and basketball is so woven together by relationships, friendships, and rivalries that at one point or another, a coach would have played or coached with another player who then went on to become a coach somewhere else, who by doing that influenced other players he coached to do the same thing, starting the chain over and over again until we get to the current NBA. Sounds simple enough, right? And once you get into the big leagues, you usually stay. There's only been 332 coaches in NBA history, so this isn't rocket science, just research. Also, the NBA coaching brackets are elite, so not everybody is getting in. As Meek Mill would say, there are levels to this shit. As I said earlier in the video, every single NBA coach coaching right now has a connection to a former coach that they played or coached under. For example, 13 coaches in the NBA right now have connections to Greg Popovich, who has one of the biggest branches on this massive NBA tree. Those 13 coaches are Jacques Vaughn, Kenny Atkinson, James Borrego, Jim Boylan, Mike Budenholzer, Mike Miller, Brett Brown, Mike Malone, Steve Kerr, Taylor Jenkins, Quinn Snyder, Lloyd Pierce, and of course, the man himself, Pop. Popovich's offenses are fluid with a pass-first system established to find the best shot possible. Pop has shown that throughout his time as head coach of the Spurs, but his disciples follow that trend as well. Coach Bud gave both the Atlanta Hawks and the Milwaukee Bucks some of the best offenses in the new era with highly lethal three-point shooting teams. Steve Kerr did the same with a very fluid offense based on the principles of both Coach Pop and Phil Jackson's triangle offense to create a beautiful system between Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and later Kevin Durant. You'll notice that all of these coaches have taken certain characteristics of Pop's free-flowing offense, highly intelligent defense, and made it their own. Except Brett Brown, we just don't know what he's doing. Oh, and Jim Boylan too. Can't help all of them. Anyway, Pop's tree has won over 3,000 games in the NBA throughout their history and currently has a win percentage of 56.7. As head coaches, only Kerr and Pop have won championships, making this tree's championship total eight. Sure, Pop's unreal total of 1,272 wins by himself does help the rest of the cast, but still, Pop's branch is soon becoming a tree of its own. 
Second on the list is a tie between the Pat Riley tree and the George Carl tree. These trees are smaller, no doubt, but hold tons of influence in terms of championships and winning. Riley's tree includes Brad Stevens, Doc Rivers, Eric Spolstra, and Steve Clifford. The Riley tree may not be as abundant with coaches, but it sure knows how to win. And that's probably the best way to describe Riley's methodology as a coach. Winning is literally the only goal. You may know Riley from his time in Miami. He runs a tight ship, checking body fat percentages of players, making sure they're in shape and in peak performance. Performance and reaching the goal of winning above all else for Riley and his staff. Whether it was getting down and dirty with the Knicks in the 90s, or letting the Showtime Lakers run wild in the 80s, or recruitment and relationship building with LeBron in the 2010s, Riley is shown to be one of the most adaptable coaches in NBA history. Through all of that, one thing is certain. This coaching tree knows how to deal with superstars. His small knit coaching tree is exactly the same. Riley himself had to deal with Kareem, Magic, Worthy with the Lakers, then later Patrick Ewing with the Knicks, and then later than that, Shaq and D-Wade in Miami. Doc Rivers dealt with a disgruntled Tracy McGrady in Orlando, then the cast of personalities in Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, Kendrick Perkins, and Rajon Rondo in Boston. And now you can add Kawhi and Paul George to Doc Rivers' list as well. Eric Spolstra, although people weren't sure about him at the beginning, handled guys like LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Ray Allen, and now Jimmy Butler with poise. Steve Clifford, we will give you Kemba Walker. Brad Stevens didn't fare very well with Kyrie, but Riley and Stevens' connection is very, very thin, but that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. But regardless, a dominant tree with eight NBA championships total, just like Greg Popovich's tree. As for the George Carl tree, they've definitely got the wins to prove it, but not so much the championships. His tree includes Dwayne Casey, Terry Stotts, Nick Nurse, and Scott Brooks. Nick Nurse is only there by association with George Carl. He doesn't directly have any experience coaching under Coach Carl, but by association with Dwayne Casey, he'd be a part of this tree. And funny enough, he's the only guy in this tree with an NBA championship as a head coach. Casey won a ring with the Mavericks as an assistant in 2011, but still, head coach rings only. Carl, Casey, and Stotts seem to always coach those fringe teams that are at the cusp of winning a championship. Stotts has been the longtime coach of the Blazers who made it to the Western Conference Finals in 2019. Casey coached the Raptors and led them to multiple successful regular seasons, but dwindled in the playoffs. And Coach Carl probably had the best and worst chance at a ring. He made it to the NBA Finals with the mighty Seattle Supersonics in 1996. But again, probably a bad year to make it to such heights because on the opposite side of the court, he had to face Michael Jordan and the 72 win Chicago Bulls. He also didn't say hi to Michael Jordan at a restaurant, so he wasn't doing himself any favors. Regardless, a 56.1 win percentage for the Carl Tree, one championship ring because of Nick Nurse, and an ever-growing tree. The two much smaller trees are the Mike D'Antoni coaching tree and the Casey Jones coaching tree. D'Antoni's tree includes himself, Pelicans coach Alvin Gentry, and Cavaliers coach JB Bickerstaff. D'Antoni is the pioneer of seven seconds or less basketball, and through stints with the Rockets and the Suns, we don't talk about the Knicks and Lakers years, D'Antoni successfully led teams with ball dominant guards to very successful seasons. While it hasn't proven to provide a championship yet, the hope is still alive. As for Bickerstaff and Gentry, they're fairly new to the world of coaching, but their styles differ from D'Antoni because they've also spent a lot of time as assistants for other coaches as well. Assessing which coach is under which coaching tree is difficult just because assistant coaches will hop from one team to another like bees do with flowers. The same applies for the KC Jones coaching tree. Jones was a former player for the Boston Celtics who ended up coaching two future coaches in Rick Carlisle and Nate McMillan who have also went on to create their own coaching trees. You could even add Dwayne Casey and Terry Stotts into this coaching tree because of his connection to Rick Carlisle in Dallas. Timberwolves head coach Ryan Saunders also falls under this umbrella through his connection to his late and great father, Flip. The other branch is the McMillan coaching tree that includes current Lakers head coach Frank Vogel and Suns head coach Monty Williams. But both of those coaches spent a lot of time with other teams as well, so tons of double dipping, but we'll get to that. Collectively, this branch has over 2,500 wins and three NBA championships as head coach. Two from Casey Jones himself and one from Rick Carlisle in 2011 with the Dallas Mavericks. That leaves us, totally pun intended, with two coaches that have been unaccounted for. Billy Donovan, who got his start under Rick Pitino, which, yikes, 
and Luke Walton, who is also part of the Phil Jackson family tree, which is technically the Tex Winter family tree, which actually bears no connection to the rest of the NBA at all. Actually, Winter was the coach of Kansas State, who had a huge rivalry with Kansas, which was the school that Naismith started coaching basketball in, so you could even say that the Winter Tree is like the arch rival of the Naismith coaching tree. Okay, so if you've got this far into the video, you're probably telling me to hurry the f up. Show me how you get from a random coach like Jacques Vaughn to the freaking inventor of basketball, James Naismith. Got you. So we have these big trees that currently rule the world of basketball. Greg Popovich, Pat Riley, Mike D'Antoni, George Carl, Casey Jones, and those guys are legendary coaches, but at some point, they were starting out in the game too. They were video coordinators and assistant coaches at some point too. So each one of these guys belongs to a certain tree as well. Don't worry, I'll spare you the lengthy explanation. The easiest route is this. James Naismith invented basketball in 1891. He took his invention to the University of Kansas and began teaching it and coaching it in 1899. Naismith, surprisingly, wasn't like the Canadian Heritage Moment commercial. He actually sucked at coaching. He coached from 1899 to 1907 and led Kansas to a 55 and 60 record in those years. Naismith, however, went on to coach the late and great and legendary Fog Allen, who ended up coaching from 1919 to 1956 with Kansas. He won the national championship in 1952 and is a big part of making Wilt Chamberlain into the basketball Goliath that he became in the NBA. Allen was a huge factor in the Olympics making basketball an official sport in 1936. So yeah, Naismith made the sport, but without Allen, there would be no basketball like there is today. What may be Allen's greatest contribution is not his coaching, but who he ended up mentoring. Dutch Longborg, Adolf Rupp, Ralph Miller, and North Carolina's famous coach, Dean Smith. All four of those coaches ended up in the Hall of Fame. This is where the connection begins to spread. Dean Smith created his own massive coaching tree that includes Larry Brown, Roy Williams, and George Carl, who all served under Smith as either an assistant coach or a video coordinator. Carl, like I mentioned earlier, has his own tree, and this is where his connection is to James Naismith. Roy Williams doesn't necessarily have much of a coaching tree yet, and Larry Brown, well, Larry Brown may have the greatest coaching tree of all time. Brown, who has coached nine NBA teams through a career that started in 1974 with the Denver Nuggets and goes all the way to the late 80s with David Robinson and the Spurs, to the mid 90s with Reggie Miller and the Pacers, to the early 2000s with Allen Iverson and the Sixers, to finally winning an NBA championship with the gritty Detroit Pistons in 2004, and then the Knicks and Charlotte Bobcats, but again, we don't talk about those days. Throughout his almost 50 year coaching career, Brown has made a tremendous amount of impact on the game. The following coaches were either players, video coordinators, or assistants at some point in time under the legendary Larry Brown. Spurs GM R.C. Buford, legendary Kansas coach Bob Hill, current Pelicans coach Alvin Gentry, Kentucky Wildcats coach John Calipari, former Knicks coach and Mr. Potato lookalike Mike Woodson, Oklahoma City Thunder assistant coach Mo Cheeks, and finally, Greg frickin' Popovich. Do you get it now? Doesn't that frickin' blow your mind? Pretty much every coach in the NBA can be rooted back to the inventor of the sport over 100 years ago. It's just, what? But still, we're missing this entire side of a tree. Red Auerbach never had any connection with Fog Allen, Dean Smith, or any of the Hall of Fame Kansas alum, so he never really had a direct connection to Naismith. Auerbach's coaching tree is massive, and it took me a while to figure this out, but I finally found a connection. The man they call the man of the people, the weed-smoking, super dope coach, Don Nelson. Nelson played for Red Auerbach in 1966. He also went on to have Mike Dunleavy, Avery Johnson, and Greg Popovich all serve as assistants, and because Popovich also served under Larry Brown, who served under Dean Smith, who played for Fog Allen, who played for Naismith, the true connection between these two massive trees holding them by a thread is the amazing and intelligent Coach Popovich. The rest is history. But wait, 
let me tie some loose ends. Casey Jones was also a player for Red Auerbach and Casey Jones coach Rick Carlisle who had Mike Brown serve as an assistant. Mike Brown was also an assistant for Popovich. Bing, connection. Doc Rivers was a player for Pat Riley in the 1990s, but Pat Riley played for a former Celtic Bill Sharman. Sharman back to Auerbach, ding, connection. Even Dan Tony has a connection to Red Auerbach. He was a player for Bob Cousy in 1974. Cousy back to Red Auerbach, ding, connection. I can go on and on. I'm not going to because you're probably annoyed of me by now, but I could go on and on. Regardless, this is just one more thing you can add to the fact that basketball is the coolest sport in the world. Over 90% of former and current NBA coaches can be linked back to the inventor of basketball, Dr. James Naismith. Incredible. Except the dark side. Phil Jackson should never lead you to the dark side. As always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification button for more Lingo Sports and basketball videos. Take care.